control D and you have mask 3 here let's lock the first two set this one to add then hit MM bring the expansion down again and then if you select the bottom two points and hold a shift we can drag this up and this would act as the, the little health bar as you can see here so next would be the uh, the percentage um, but let's actually let's trace all the boxes first so this would be called um, box center and let's uh, let's let's just make a new layer same thing set the opacity to zero and let's go to uh, let's go to this one here make sure you have your layer selected and we're gonna go a little further because this feathers out as you can see on the bottom and on the right bring the opacity back up select the mask one control D set the second mask to subtract hit MM to get all of our mask options and bring the expansion of the mask 2 in to about there then let's duplicate mask 1 again to get a third mask lock the first two and if you hit MM again you can get our expansion and bring that down so it matches the health bar at the top up here then we're going to bring in the right side to match that and then we can bring in the bottom you have to make sure your other layers are locked though because then you'll be selecting uh, points that you don't want to select now if we want to feather this out um, let's make a mask here oh wrong layer make sure this is selected let's make a mask here and a mask here this looks a little confusing right now um, you want to set those to subtract and let's see let's solo this and then we will feather those the fourth and fifth mask like so and then I'll get you the faded effect you uh, you guys are going for so next let's make this um, full triangle piece all you have to do is select this get your pen tool and just make three little clicks well four clicks but and uh, I think that's it for that one yep now for the other one, for the uh, the opposite of this, all you'd have to do is duplicate it. Um, we can call this left box. Uh, control D to duplicate. Call it right box. Hit S for the scale. Uncheck this uh, link button here, and let's go to our X and set it to negative 100. And then link it again. It should be over here. So. Uh, we would have our right box, our left box here. Um, now, the top box is pretty much the same thing. Once again, you can right click down here and go to new, not new light, new solid. Set the opacity to zero. Get your rectangle tool. Go a little further because we're going to feather it out, remember? Duplicate the first mask set the second mask to subtract bring the opacity back up hit MM to get all of our mask options and bring that down then let's duplicate our mask one to get a third mask lock the first two hit MM for that layer to get the expansion bring it down so it matches the little health bar there and then take the bottom two points hold shift and drag it up. 
just like that. Now select this, uh, get a rectangle tool again, and basically you're looking at this line right here. So this is the line that's going to cut it off. Set it to subtract. So you cut it off right there. If we solo this you can see it a little better. And then for the fourth mask we will feather that. And that'll give us the uh, that fading off effect. You can unlock these. So basically, um, those are the four main boxes. We'll set this to top box. Now, if you look closely, you can kind of see that there's like this um, faded black um, box inside of these boxes, and that's really easy to achieve. All you have to do is just layer new solid, uh, make it a black solid, and then use our rectangle tool again. Let's set the opacity down. Um, let's see, we'll do our top box. Select the black solid, select your rectangle tool, mask it out like this. You can set our opacity back up. Hit F and feather that out. Then set the opacity down to I think like 50 or so, and then um, just make sure it's below the uh, the box we have. So you get something like this. You can mess with the feather options and, and the expansion. I think it's it may be a little too feathered out. Um, let's try five, and then we can just bring it up or, or something like that. You know, we bring the opacity to, to 40. Then you would do this. Um, you can just duplicate this and, and move it around for the other um, for the other boxes. So if you control D, like so, and then one more for the middle. Once again, just make sure that these are below um, the uh, the main layers the main box layers. Um, I think this one goes to... where is this one? Okay, that's up there. This one is that. That's our right box. And this one will be our left box. And you can pre-compose these. If you take top box and it's um, it's black solid, select both of them. Control Shift C and name this top box and then just do the same for these right box left box and center box you can see we got our boxes here now let's move on to um, putting the percentages on the inside of these Alright, so if you guys go to Google and uh, type in Fallout 3 font, you can get uh, this second link here. And once you're there, you click this link here. And then you can download the Fallout 3 font. Um, and I will provide this link to this page uh, in the description of the tutorial, just in case you can't get here. But, let's start filling in these boxes with percentages. If we select our text tool, and let's do, uh, I don't know, 84%. And we will scale this down, but first off, you want to select your text here and just make sure everything is default over here. This is 100, this is 100, these are 0, and other than that, you're, you're fine. Um, so let's click in between the percentage and this last number and move this just a little bit because it's a little too close. And we take this and we'll scale it down a little more than halfway um, halfway the size of the last number here so we take our text here and we scale it down like so and bring it about here we can start duplicating our text and moving it around to these other boxes 
Now one thing I probably should have done before I duplicated these um, is change the color because they do need to be this green color here. So let's just do that really quick. You can use the color selector to do it quickly like so. And then let's start changing some of these percentages. And then you have to move this again. And one more. Let's see, let's change this one to like 12 or something because that's going to be the head. So there you go. Now let's take our um, percentages here and drag them into the appropriate um, compositions. So if you do control X to cut and go into our top box comp, just paste it in there. And we'll basically just do that for uh, the rest of these. Center and that is our right and finally the left and then you can just close these alright we're probably going to add a glow to these um, but we'll probably just do that in this composition so let's drag in um, all of those compositions we made center box uh, right box, top box, and left box. And those are uh, pretty good sizes here. So you can just move these around. Where's the top? There it is, alright. Move these around. We can position these a little later, but let's get the color right. So let's see, if we duplicate this and set it to add, and then we take the bottom layer and we apply a fast blur to it, it'll give us kind of a glowy, a glowy look here. Um, we may even set this to screen because it's a little little bright. I set this to like 10 or so. Um, and that looks pretty good. I mean you can set it to add because it looks kind of cool. Um, but for this tutorial I'll just set it to uh, to screen. Because I think screen looks the best right now. Um, and basically just do that for the other layers. So we can eh, apply this fast blur to the bottom layers here. And then set all of these, the top layers, to screen. Just like that. And you might even want to do um, a brightness and contrast on the top layer. Maybe just to brighten it up a little bit. So this is the first point when we would have these dialog boxes appear. Now since we're selecting the torso, this will be our main one, uh, the center box. So we can move that, you know, maybe here. The right box, the left and right boxes are pretty good where they are, because those can be the, the arms. But not all dialog boxes are displayed when you select a certain part of the body. Like the legs wouldn't be displayed right here because you couldn't really see them. The head we could, you know, we can go either way, but we'll leave it out just because we'll be zooming up to the head later. Um, so if you take this top box, we can move it up, and even though you can still see it right now, we'll just have the opacity. Uh, we'll lower the opacity. So if we parent all of these layers right now to the footage, when we move around, um, they will stick. So this is about good. Um, let's take the 
top box and bring it down just a little. Maybe like right here. Because we still need to write head and we still need to write torso above these layers. Let's actually do that right now. If we select our text tool and type in torso and another one for head. And obviously we will scale these down. Make sure they're centered. Maybe 33. And then as for the head, uh, that will be 33 as well. And we'll move it up here. And we're going to do the same thing with these. Um, we're going to duplicate them and blur the bottom layer with a fast blur because fast blur always renders faster than everything else. And they all pretty much look the same, so I use fast blur all the time. And we'll put that on the bottom layer for the head text. And set both of those to screen. Yeah, and that's good. So, let's take all four of these text layers and parent them to the footage as well, just like everything else. And then we'll fade the opacity in and out when we start animating all this stuff. Alright, so let's start animating our sequence here. Um, I have this file, as you guys know, and I'm going to use it as kind of a, a template to guide me in animating. So we'll use this as a guide. But let's just take it layer by layer because there's a lot of things we got to animate. And this can get kind of um, detailed and intricate, but we'll work it out. Okay, so right, we'll start at the freeze frame. We'll call that frame zero is when we get the freeze frame. So if we go forward two frames from when it freeze frames, um, and you guys have your camera position already animated as well. So go forward two frames from the freeze frame and we're going to turn on um, this outline we have here and the grid that covers the entire body so if you select um, either the top or the bottom layer and then hold shift and hit the opposite it'll select all of them now if you hit T and we are going to set a keyframe for all these layers and we will start it at zero and let's actually bring this keyframe back, just one frame, and then bring it back up to 100. So if you go back and forth, I'm hitting the page up and page down keys to go back and forth like this. Um, it goes from from nothing, from 0% to 100%. Now if you go forward one more frame, let's make another keyframe, then go forward two frames, one, two, then set it to zero then go forward one more frame from there and then set it back to 100 so it flashes on as we zoom in fades out and then it comes right back on and this stays on until we zoom in the grid actually does not flick back on so we can delete this for the grid full layer so we just have the outline as it zooms in So. Now we need this this uh, piece of grid here, or this wipe or pan, to come down the body as we're zooming in. So let's go to about here, select our grid wipe, hit M, and we're going to animate the second mask. So we'll make a keyframe, go forward to not quite the end, but maybe five frames before the animation for the first camera move ends. And if you can't see your mask, 